What's going on everyone? Sean here with Unearthed Treasures, another night of Goodwill thrifting. Come with me, see what I find. Uh, it's definitely two hours, uh, it's just, it's probably more of an hour and a half of thrifting, looking and hunting to find stuff for my eBay store uh, to keep the listings going. And as usual, what do we see? We're going for the racks. Always prioritize the racks. You never know what you're going to find on the racks, so go to the racks because you just got to assume that not everybody's been there. There could be some good stuff on it. So I'm trying to get situated so I can start uh, checking this rack. In a minute, I'm going to find uh, something on this rack that uh, relates to another video I did recently. Um, not very many people have viewed that one. Um, I guess the... Uh, Subject focus on a specific product is a little bit harder sell for viewing, but uh, once you see it, you'll know uh, which video that relates to because it's a popular brand in my area uh, amongst people and it sells really well. So I'm super stoked to find something on the rack uh, coming right in the door. Sometimes you can't find the tags, so what I do is I read the buttons uh, and try to find a defining mark on the jeans. Let me know uh, in the comments if you want me to do a future video on what I'm looking for on the Levi jeans. Um, there's a lot to look at to kind of age jeans uh, between the red tags and the inside tags. Uh, plus you got the stitching and everything else so um, definitely want to look at that I think these are uh, good jeans right here um, that I threw in there I don't think I focused in the video enough for you to see but I think it was what's all of man seven all of mankind or something uh, women's jeans uh, I think it's the first pair I ever found But if you don't know my style, my style is to throw it in the cart, don't look it up, go through, get through the store, and then have a, like 30 minutes at the end where I, uh, I look everything up and see if it is selling for a good sell-through rate, it's bringing in some profit and not overpriced. Um, and you'll see at this store, uh, it's clean, it's well run, but it's also... They, they use the higher prices like they don't even use the solds on eBay they use the highest listing they saw that first popped up on their eBay search I wish they would click over to solds and maybe drop their prices by 20 30 bucks an item um, but it's hard to influence um, managers you don't know I looked at this jacket for a while. It's slightly distressed, but in a cool way. I just never heard of it. Um, would you have picked it up or to look it up, or would you have left it on the rack? I left this one on the rack. Come on, let's find something good. What is that? It's Dixon. D-I-X-X-O-N. Motorcycle, skateboarding, punk rocks, flannel company. Uh, right there in my local thrift, hanging on the rack at a decent price. Was so stoked. You know I took that to the checkout. That's a rare find for me. Who knows why it ended up in here. Alright, I see more racks. So I think I'm going right for the rack. But you can see there's competition down here. I didn't want to get in his way and look too bullyish. Uh, so I go to the other side first. Um, see what's on this rack. Um, it was a bunch of uh, you know, linens and things. Not really exciting. 
since he was hanging out there for a minute, I was just like, I'll go start over here and then I'll work back towards the rack when he's done. So I got one eye over there seeing when he's going to go away. And then I just start going through the polo section, uh, see what I can find. This looked like a, you know an older Aquaman shirt. I liked it, but it was double stitch. Uh, I end up putting it back just because shirts don't really sell for a lot of money unless they're really old. Uh, but I did like it. And today I think there was a lot of like older uh, polos, but they just weren't like anything special. I'm trying not to fill my store with a bunch of stuff that sells around the eight to twelve dollar price point, and I paid five. Um, so, if I think it's not going to sell really fast, um, I really don't want to bring it into my store right now while I'm sitting on a bunch of clothes that needs to sell out of my store currently. This is a really nice Cal Poly San Luis Obispo college T-shirt. Um, having gone there, I always will pick this up anyway, but it's a really nice shirt. Um, so I don't even look up the comps, totally buying it, um, and I will sell it. But it was a really nice shirt. I stared at this shirt for a while, but they uh, they wanted 25 bucks for it. It was new with tags. Um, oh, we got a break. The guy left. There was another guy who came over, too. Um, and I believe the guy doubled back and gets the jacket. Uh, he was like, if you don't mind, I'm like, oh, no, take the jacket. Uh, it was a Calvin Klein jacket. I wasn't looking at it for interest. I just wanted to get a peek at the rack, see if there was anything I wanted off this thing. Before too many other people looked at it. I was just making sure this wasn't like a special blend of sweater. Uh, it was just a cotton, cotton blend. If it had been cashmere, I'd probably would have thrown it in the cart. Casa Robles, the local high school here. You can never go wrong with Pokemon. It's just this is a um, like a nurse's shirt, active wear with Pokemon on it, uh, but it only sells like brand new at uh, Amazon for like twenty seven bucks. So I think I end up putting it back. So it didn't resell that high. But I thought it was cool. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing like four racks just laid out. It's like they're strategizing seeing if people will pick it off the rack before they have to spend the time putting it up, which is really smart. Uh, a lot of the guys, when I found them, they were trying to fix the racks for closing since we were getting close to the last hour. There was a lot of Travis Matthew in here today. I did an Oakley. Uh, I think there was three or four Oakley shirts in a row for eight bucks. And I was like, I don't know if Oakley sells well. I, I did some... Bubba something Oakley shirt a while back ago and it sold but I didn't remember if it sold really well so I, I spent a little time here uh, seeing if the sell through rate was anything uh, so I could just pick up the three or four shirts right there um, I don't want to give away the plot or the what happens until it actually happens in the video um, you can't use the volume or the the stuff in the store. They play the music really loud. 
so I have to come back and do the voiceover so let me know if you guys want me to talk about topics during this um, I'm open to sharing whatever I know uh, so if there's something you're just interested in uh, we can go into it I'm not going to talk about something I really don't have an experience with so I will let you know when that is um, but if I know about it I'll definitely share it and at the the Oakley brand golf shirts weren't going for much. Uh, you know, the high it wasn't a high sell through rate. I think there was like 500 with like 50 sold or something. It was 10 percent sell through. It could have been 5,000. I can't remember now. Did I show it on video? But yeah, you're hoping to find a rare gem in here. Because some of the non-appealing looking polos that are just plain Jane, sometimes they're like Bad Bunny with, you know, a, just a different logo emblem, but it's solid plain. And that sold like the second I listed it uh, when I found a white Bad Bunny with like a pink bunny on the front. Um, so you, you really got to look through. There's no telling. The shirts don't all like mark on the left arm or something their emblems you just don't know until you flip through but it's a little work and effort to go through all this and I come to this thrift maybe once a week um, I don't get over here every day because it's further from my house that's an L was it Le Tigre uh, polo that I put in the cart this is, what well, I think it's an old Columbia. I put it back, but yeah, we're starting to get in the older polos now where I was like, oh, wait, one after another. But they just weren't great. It's like a Boston dry fit Nike. You probably get like 18 bucks for that thing. This had a ripped out tag, but it was polo. Um, I put it just to look it up, but um, I ended up putting that back. I couldn't verify what that it was worth anything. I said the emblem was pretty cool on this one, that pink against the blue. We're about to hit the hat section, that bin up top that you're going to start seeing the rack above uh, is the hat section. There was a time at this thrift, this very thrift, that I found an Hermes bucket hat, uh, lamb's wool, and I sold it for like 380 bucks. It was, and I bought it for four bucks. Right here, you couldn't tell it was designer. It was black on black with the name, and then the inside tag, it did say Hermes on it. Um, so I was super stoked uh, to find that in the hat section. And it looked like a little plastic kid's hat. Um, but man, once you touched it, you kind of knew. This is grunt style uh, polo. It was kind of see-through-ish. But um, I just didn't think it was going to bring in a lot of money. How popular is grunt style where you guys are? Do you see it a lot? A lot of the veterans wear it here. And I think we're starting to get to the point where the larges end and I, and I end up uh, cutting away. So I don't really look through the medium blows too much. Um, the sell-through rate just gets less and less, so with limited time, I kind of limit where I go. But you can see that hat rack is kind of uh, full, so I figured I'd pull you guys off and show you what you can find up here. See if we can find a designer hat. You got to look in the 
at the tags and the inside of these things. Um, this is a nice Pikachu uh, beanie uh, for $1.99. That would have been great. They want $6.99 for that thing. I put it back. A Bud Light hat. Um, I think they wanted four or five ninety nine for it. That hat probably sells between twelve and eighteen bucks. Um, just not enough meat on the bone there. This is a World Championship Giants hat. A little dirty, but um, I can clean that up. So I'm gonna spend the time and clean it up for four ninety nine. I might be able to get twenty bucks or more out of that. A lot of common hats down here. I end up putting this in the cart because I don't know what it is. Uh, so sometimes it's just like doing the research. I'll, I'll put it in the cart. It was like an $8 hat. It's not worth picking up. But I'm secretly hoping to find a $400 hat again. Okay, my favorite jeans. I always look at the jeans. I'll tell you, thrift store jeans are not my favorite. I'd rather find them in a storage locker at the swap meet uh, where it's about 5 bucks, 10 bucks tops. Um where I buy them. Uh, if you want to buy the old vintage jeans at the swap meet, you're probably looking at at least $20 pair. Um, they know what they got. Um, but sometimes you can find $20 pairs that you can sell for $150. So if you're used to selling vintage jeans, uh, you got to get to know your vendors at the swap meet. And sometimes on Levi's, when I think it's a slightly older tag and maybe baggy fit, I'll throw it in to look it up just to see um, if it's going for any good money. I definitely don't have everything memorized yet, but I can tell you just as of recently, I've thrown a lot of white tags in my cart and almost all of them were worthless and I put them back. Um, so just FYI, the white tags, not that special, uh, for most of them, unless you find the ones that are dated back to the twenties or thirties. But if you see orange tag, red tag, big E, that's not modern and not modern means like Go inside and the inside, and if there's a, um, you know, like a washing tag, uh, if it looks really modern, it's probably modern, made in like 2015 range. Um, if it's a paper tag, it's probably a real big E. This is a Ralph Lauren pair of pants. Um, I don't really find Ralph Lauren jeans ever, um, not in men's at least. Um, so I throw them in the cart to look them up. I end up leaving them. They didn't. Uh, I just couldn't find that, that I was going to get any money off that. I checked the crotch. If you don't notice, um, that seems to be a common wear spot on jeans. Uh, to the point where I don't compromise with the. If it's worn out there, I just won't sell it. Yeah, every now and again, the pants that are thrown up top, uh, they're worth something. For Somebody was staring at them for a while. and um, But uh, those were just, you know, keep on moving type pants.
These white pants are interesting. They're bugle boys. I um, I don't see bugle boy jeans ever. That's definitely 90s type uh, wear. End up putting it back. It was just wasn't going for a whole lot based on what they wanted for it. I think they wanted like 14 or 15 bucks for it. So it wasn't worth it. But if I had found that for a dollar or two, I might have I might have took a risk. But in order to move it fast, you probably would have to lower it down to like 20 bucks to get it to move. I think a lot of people had it listed around 35. But there was no sales on it at 35. All right, the long shirts, my favorite section. I, everything's my favorite section. My favorite shirt section. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at the shorts first to see if the, anything stands out. I'm not really good about thoroughly going through the shorts. That's a needs improvement for me. I do see a lot of people pull out like golf shorts and Oh, I usually pull out the 80s vintage, like, big jean shorts. Those I can see in eyeball. Uh, but as far as knowing what other shorts sell, well, I don't... I haven't done the research yet. We're in the smaller sizes here, so I'm just trying to take a peek at anything that's super interesting. Because uh, I really don't want to find anything here. Unless it's great. Let me know in the comments if you like this style of video. I hear a lot of feedback on other... Uh, areas of other content creators where people complain that you don't take them through the process and show just the easy parts um, so I wanted to show kind of more of the grindy parts but talk as I go um, let me know if you like this style or if you'd rather me kind of do a little bit of zooms on each section maybe do a couple focuses but just show the uh, summary of what I got at the end because um, I feel like you get, a, you get a lot of information just seeing what I pass over. Like I end up putting this in the cart. It's uh, the last Airbender um, Avatar shirt. Uh, but it just wasn't going for a lot of money uh, based on... They wanted 10 bucks for it. And I think you sell it. The top sold price was 22 And most of them were around 18 to $13. So uh, there's no money there on that shirt. But knowing what I put back helps, I think... Uh, adjust your filter so that you're not just picking up everything and you get more confident uh, to put things back that you normally might pick up because um, I watched other content where they're like I pick this up every time and next thing you know I pick it up just like they did and then it doesn't sell through it it's horrible so I wanted to make sure that I tell you like I look them all up I don't leave unless I check that they sell um, and sometimes I'll take a risk on a shirt if it's worth enough money, but I don't try to just collect shirts and sink all my money into something that doesn't sell. I mean, we're in the business of making money, right? So you're not coming to the thrift to, to give away your money. These Wrangler shirts do well for me, but... They haven't been selling uh, lately for much, and they went at eight ninety nine. And these shirts go between like twenty four dollars and fourteen dollars. I like this shirt. The print's really cool. Um, it's a Route sixty six shirt, uh, so I put it in the cart to look it up. It's six ninety nine. Uh, spoiler: it, I do get it, um, and it was about a forty dollar value shirt. Uh, so really good find. Um, this is a really cool Tommy Bahama shirt. And I don't know if you can see, but there's embroidered, like, indented areas with pineapples all over this shirt. Uh, it looked really cool. It was 100% silk. We always look for silk. Um, and there was a second one that looks just like it with a different color profile right after it. 
I think this is it. I end up putting these back. I I saw a few of these listed for like twelve bucks on. I mean, they're steel. A high quality shirt for twelve bucks. Uh, there was a lot of them uh, on eBay. So if you are into that. They weren't upside down pineapples or whatever. They were right side up. Um, it was just a smart looking shirt. But I didn't buy it. Because they wanted uh, $14.99 for them each. I used to buy the Tommy Bahama when it was like $6.99 to $9.99. Nine ninety nine had to be like embroidered and really good, but um, as of lately, they just upped their price. I think I bought too much Hawaiian shirts at six ninety nine that they thought they could up their price and keep selling them. We'll let them go to the bins. But if you go into the mall to buy that very same Tommy Bahama shirt, they're like 150 to 200 bucks. Like, insane. I don't know why people pay full price at the mall, but they do. Um, that's why I don't feel bad putting high prices on eBay. Because uh, people don't mind paying a lot of money. And I don't mind collecting a lot of money. Um, so. But when I want to buy a budget shirt, I have to spend the time to look for them out here. But I enjoy the process, so. And I'll tell you, I'm dying. Like, the dust smell coming off this section was really bad. And I, I'm allergic to dust already, so um, I was having such a rough time uh, breathing over here. But wasn't a lot of shoppers at this one... Uh, I would say there's like 12 of us in the store in the last two hours. And unfortunately, one of the ladies, uh, right before close, right before they lock the doors, walks out with a whole cart full of stuff. Um, she totally stole from this place. They were so mad at her. very commonplace though in my area for all the uh, homeless people to steal cartloads full of stuff and walk out the door with it this is a Patagonia shirt I don't find Patagonia very often um, I, I know it's a really good brand so I throw it in the cart to look it up, but they wanted 15 bucks for it. Um, I couldn't see that it sold that well uh, for a high price, so I ended up putting it back. Um, but it was cool to see a Patagonia. Um, if you don't know much about Patagonia, I believe they take it back and they'll fix and mend uh, the clothes over time uh, and send them back to you. Uh, so sounds like they have a good relationship with their customer base. I like this shirt. It's a Polo Ralph Lauren. It's well kept, like iron, uh, dry cleaned. Uh, I end up putting it back, even though I pulled it off. Um, there was like five thousand of these shirts. I couldn't, and not five thousand sold. So um, I didn't want to sink any money to it. It definitely didn't stand out that much. What topics would you guys like to share? Do you want to talk about collar types on shirts? Uh, if we went into the suit coats, do you want to learn about suit coats and what types there are and what things are named? Um, flip cuffs, whatever, uh, buttons, pocket types. We can cover different topics while we're watching the video to kind of make it 
educational while you're watching uh, me go through, seeing what I pick up. Here I'm perusing the pants. I, I really don't pick up many dress pants, but I'm looking for misplaced pants and like really nice golf pants. Um, or very vintage pants. I have found a lot of vintage pants on this side. Um, and they've almost all sold. So anytime there's a super old pair of pants, it looks like it's from the 60s or 70s, especially with tags. I pick it up if it's uh, around ten dollars. Always check these hat racks. That's a used size hat. I don't do used size hats anymore. Just there's no money in it, and oh my god, if you don't check to make sure that your hat's a used size, I mean, when in doubt, put it on your head. Because uh, sometimes the hat doesn't say youth, but it is a youth. And then you sell it, and the customer's like, dude, you sold me a youth hat. You didn't disclose it. The hat doesn't say it's youth, but it's a small hat. Um, so now I ha I put them on my head and test it to make sure uh, if it's my big head. I'm kind of going down the shoe aisle because there's a guy over in the next aisle. But the next aisle is like sweatshirts, sweaters heavier stuff and that's where you can find a lot of good stuff uh, that's worth some money so I take some time to look at the purses but not a huge fan of uh, thrifting purses because there's so many fakes but I am looking for um, kind of better material purses um, and I will check the inside tags to see but if you find tags with no names on it the manufacturer didn't even bother to put branding on it. It's not worth anything. And if it looks too new, like the tags are still on it, it's typically a, a fake. I do find an authentic coach purse here. I'm staring at it for a second because I'm like, what is this button? And, said, and then I find, figure it out. It said coach. And it's like a blue leather. Um, so I'm like, all right. It's got some marks, but I think you can clean it off. I mean, if they were charging probably 10 bucks, I'd have bought this thing. You know, I check the inside tag. It's looking legit. And then I find the price tag on the inside. $50. That thing probably only sells for $25. Fifty dollars online. I don't. I don't know. Fifty bucks. I thought that was too high for a thrift store. Somebody's trying to drive a Lambo to the thrift store. It's crazy. I almost bought that. It said Oregon on it. If it was Oregon Ducks, I might you know, just I didn't I didn't get the sense it was actually team apparel. Uh, another thing I want to ask you guys is: Do you want to see how much I list them for uh, in potential profit? You know, minus the uh, cost of goods here. Uh, potential profit I got from these do you like that summary at the end let me know in the comments um, it takes me a little bit more time on the videos but I figured if I just talk through the video and tell you right here you know on the eaches um, but if you like that summary to see what two hours worth of thrifting kind of nets two hours time but it's really like an hour and a half of thrifting um, I can do that summary for you whatever helps it's kind of data that helps me too uh, you just want to you want to spend your time where it's best served um, I definitely like to do storage lockers over thrifting and I really like the swap meet so on Saturday Sunday you'll find me at the swap meet if I'm not selling I'm buying and even when I'm selling I'm buying I got some concept uh, videos coming up I was I do a lot of toy lots. I do well with toys. So I figured 
I would show you guys some of the old toy lots I bought, uh, show you the pictures, how I bought them, what I bought them for, and then how much I've sold them to date. Uh, the, it's always a journey. It's always something new. Not all of them are as successful as some, but uh, I'll give you the good and the bad. Um, but I'll probably do somewhat specials for the bigger ones, and then I'll do a combined set on some of the middle average ones or the bad ones. Um, seems like I'm not good at selling little people. Um, they don't sell that often for me. Here I'm looking through the stuff. Um, I really like vintage Adidas tracksuits sell well. Um, but I'm also looking for Jordan, uh, other things. I also have kids, so I'm also sizing, uh, seeing if there was anything that uh, my son might have wanted. He likes the jogger style uh, track pants. But yeah, I start to save time and just start going like, I'm going to skip this. Then I saw their sweatshirts mixed in with some of the shirts. This is like the active wear section. Snoopy's all mixed in here, but with some weird generic looking tag. I couldn't, it looked like a tag on a tag, like they copied over a tag. This is a Tommy Bahama um, quarter zip. Really nice. New with tags. They want 30 bucks for this. I'm just like, I just sold one of these and I sold it, I think, for 25 bucks used. Um, maybe 20 bucks with a stain on the arm. This one's mint um, with tags. But they want $25. There's one listed for $75 first thing you pull up on eBay. Hence the third of the price, I think, is what eBay uses or Goodwill uses to price off of eBay. But if you go into the solds, everything's $24 for those quarter zips or below. Um, so I think I would only be able to get like, I'd probably list it for $40 and have to accept like $35. Um, I don't know if I'd get the $75 price point. Let me know if you could. And if I should hold out and wait for the right buyer at 75 um, and you would have picked it up for 25 I definitely probably would have picked it up for 15 knowing I could sell it for 35 but not uh, 25 for 35 But I do put, put it in the cart to look it up later. So now we're kind of done with the clothes and we're going to go check out the other sections. This is the big blanket sections. Um, the giant's blanket right here. Um, I find blankets every now and again that I sell. Uh, the throws with a kind of a cross collectability Pendleton or some other brand mixed with um, some type of Disney. Uh, those do really well. You only can sell them for around twenty or thirty bucks, but if you buy it for five, it's not the it's not the worst deal. Um, but they don't have a huge, super high sell through rate. Here's more hats in the women's section. Um, always go to the women's section hats too. Uh, they seem to put all kinds of hats in their section as well. So get over there, check it. Uh, the the workers sometimes just put a hat at the nearest rack. They don't even look to see if it's men's or women. And women's have some nice hats that sell for a lot. I get over here and I see the yellow bin. So I'm like, all right, let me get over there and check. But first I saw a rack of gloves. I've spent a lot of time lately looking at racks of gloves because some of these things can be like Gore-Tex. Uh, ski gloves that are 25 35 bucks a pair you get them for three bucks it's it's worth it I didn't find any today yeah 
But looking at my chest cam, you think I'm looking at the women's clothes here. Uh, but I wasn't. I was looking up top. Some leftover racks. It looks like it's been left out all day and they never even put it up. Um, they went off to do other things. Um, so I was looking at the ends of the racks. Or the bins, whatever you call the rolling bins. So it's getting near closing time, so I make sure to get over there because 30 minutes prior they close all access to the, uh, the the section behind the counter here. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything worth um, asking to look at. Every now and again I'll find like a new 90s car stereo radio CB something or other in here. They typically will ask around 25 bucks, um, but if I can get 100 bucks. I'll pick it up. Um, looking at the sunglasses here, uh, you can see some of the prices uh, and some of the brands just from looking through the glass. Um, there's my toes. I'm really looking uh, down at the glasses to try to see the brands. They wanted a lot of money for some of those glasses, so I was just like, this seems to be the overpriced area store. Um, they definitely want to get a lot of value out of their items. So I'm looking for the 1% needle in a haystack thing. Um, not the one that's obviously worth something. Because they know it too and they price accordingly. There's a couple cameras in this case, so I'm looking them up. Um, I got a little uh, like price envy here. Uh, one of the first cameras that came up was like 600 bucks. Then there was a second one and the third one, but it wasn't the same model. Uh, the camera I was looking at was really worth like 35, and then one at 15, so I I passed. But you got to make sure you have the right model. Um, so that's all the that's the most important thing. But Google and eBay solds are your friend. I mean, there's a lot of other sources, but I just don't choose to pay for a, like worth point. Um, and I find the pricing on a lot of other sites to be way higher than eBay. So eBay's my price point uh, comparison is the because it's usually the lowest with the most competition. Uh, but I think that eBay has the proof of sales. And so I want to know what it sells for. This camera looked interesting. They wanted uh, 15 for it and it was worth 15 So definitely not buying that. I get gouged in fees. But always take a peek. You never know what they're going to throw back there on the floor. Uh, that might be worth something. The jewelry people are really good uh, in this area. They know when the jewelers put out their jewelry and they're here waiting on them when they get there. So typically I'm not looking for silver or gold because it's already been uh, picked through. But you might find an old cool um, belt buckle or something. If you know anything about buckles and pins, uh, you might be able to find something they don't know about. There's a lot of glass frames here I'm looking, but they're really cheap and really ragged looking. So I end up moving on. This is an area where I pick up a lot of things. They put the candles and different things in this area, but on the bottom is usually boxes of um, large objects like candle holders, vintage um, Fitz and Floyd, um, anything from Costco, the Kirkland brand, uh, if they're really nice, take the time if they're in the packaging and still good and looking brand new. 
uh, see if there's value because I get about 60 to 100 bucks on most things I find down there and while I won't find them every time uh, they, they're usually worth it and they sell probably within six months I wouldn't say that they have the best sell through rate but they've always all sold for me there's tons of little things to look out here I'm just combing over it looking to see um, if there's anything of value I probably could have took the chest cam off and give you guys a closer look I really don't do plates plates and bowls I leave all that I probably do a plate or bowl set if it was in a box, brand new. But then, other than that, I probably wouldn't mess with it. I've done electronics here and appliances, but almost always they are broken and end up being a return of some sort uh, in my store, even though I've tested them. Um, so I just stopped sourcing them here. I'm not sure why the defective ones are always full here, but that that's the case. Um, I had like a dip in sales on mugs for a while, and now there are like a lot of mug sales uh, going on in my store. So I have some space on my shelves for mugs, but I'm looking for good mugs. I want I want to find mugs that sell in the 25 plus range. Um, so I'm looking through. I find this Mickey. I've never seen this Mickey before. It's a designer Mickey. It had no flaws really, uh, so I end up looking it up for two ninety nine um, to see if this designer had any uh, following that made it really valuable. Because most Disney is very saturated, and you're not you're not going to get a lot of money for it. How's my energy? Is it dipping? It's totally 10 o'clock p.m. here. Uh, and I can feel myself kind of slowing down and not being as exciting in my voice. And uh, So uh, let me know if I should uh, not do my videos at night or uh, continue them in the morning, uh, you know, after work, like right when I get off work or something. It's just really hard to try to thrift and do videos now and get listings done. Uh, the time, the, the extra time is really hard to accommodate, but I do enjoy making the videos for you guys. This, I was more looking at the Winnie the Pooh for my daughter. She loves Winnie the Pooh, uh, but it had some scratches on it. I look for unique mugs that are from like events uh, this one, I wasn't sure what the Expos 86 was, but it just wasn't unique enough. But yeah, don't be afraid to get down and look, because most people won't bend down and look at the back of the shelf. And I think sometimes employees, they they can't buy it for a week here at our Goodwills. So they try to hide it in the back of the shelves and hope that it's there in a week so they can buy it. It's kind of a bummer they can't shop at their own store, but then they would be siphoning all the stuff. This was a cool um, Constellation mug, and when you put hot liquid in it, it changes colors. Um, but it was only worth 12 bucks, and they wanted 3 I think it was three bucks, three or four bucks. Um, so not enough profit on there for me to put it in my store. Um, but I do take the time to look it up. Um, if you ever see the mugs that have like a stay warm feature where they plug in and uh, keep the liquid warm, those kind of mugs are the ones you really always look up because uh, they tend to go for some good money. I guess a lot of people uh, 
don't drink their coffee fast and let it go cold so that that mug helps them out for me i'm i'm kind of pounding my coffee when i'm drinking it or i'm too busy to even drink my coffee Wow, these steins have done well for me in the past. Uh, they're kind of slow, but certain steins go for some good money. Um, I sell a lot of steins in the like twenty to twenty-five dollar range, um, but I, I have enough where I'm like, ah, I'll wait for my other ones to sell. not a huge fan of getting glasses without their box but um, I will look for nostalgic type glasses this is like a 2010 turtles cup uh, if it was in the 90s I would have totally picked it up um, but I'm looking for old um, really unique expensive looking uh, type glasses just like an old beer bar uh, that was famous, maybe, that's no longer around. Um, unfortunately, in my area, we get we have a place called Spaghetti Factory, so there must be 50,000 Spaghetti Factory glasses in this place. Um, and you probably can't give them away. But people still continue to buy them at Spaghetti Factory, but they don't buy them from the Goodwill. I'm not a big seller of pots and pans, um, but I, if I find some modern pot or pan, I would totally do it. Um, let's see what child's this. This is utensils. Um, I've found some old vintage utensils before. This is a set. I was trying to figure out how much they were selling this set for, um, I think it was $1.99 for the set. It's all red, uh, KitchenAid set. Looked nice. Uh, it was a little weird on the top, though. Like there was some crud on it. Um, end up passing on it because I just don't need it and I don't think I could sell it that well. Um, but I'm looking for very vintage uh, spatulas and. And really you want not just like a spatula, you want a set. Um, a set of five will sell for the 30 plus range. You find one and you're selling it for like $7.99. It's just not worth the effort to photo and list it uh, to sell one. In my opinion, on eBay. Um, if you have a antique uh, kind of booth, I think that would be perfect to pick one up. Onesie, twosies. Um, but to list it, photo it, put it on eBay, I want to get a little bit more bang for my buck. The other side of that aisle was all the like supplies. I always look for like CD cases and uh, envelopes, stuff for my store. Um, that's what I'm looking at in that area. This is like the vases area. This thing's got a huge chip out of it, but it looked interesting. I'm not a big collector of vases or buy vases, but I'm still, I'm just secretly looking for the, the tiki uh, mugs hidden in the vases. For whatever reason, the employees always think a tiki mug's a vase, so I'm hoping that there's a tiki mug here. And there wasn't. Here's a knife set. I've been really wanting to upgrade my own knife set. But also, I know knife sets sell well. Um, I was just trying to see if this was a name brand knife set or not. It didn't look like anything special, so I moved on. I've sold a few picture frame art pieces, but um, they definitely take longer to sell. Um, and I just don't get enough return on them for how much I sink into it. So I, I'm slowing down on that, but 
I think I do want to take like an art history class or something to better um, source art because I do like art. Here's kind of the, the Christmas Halloween aisle. Um, there's so much to look at right now. I think everybody's cleaning out their closet. You just got to be careful in the Christmas aisle. There's so much that you could onesie, twosie. Things that cost a couple of bucks. Um, maybe sell for ten bucks. But you got to do so much quantity to make any money off it. So I'm looking for more of a... Not a grand slam, but a double. Uh, I'd like to at least make 20 bucks off of 4 bucks in the Christmas aisle. So bags of ornaments, I sell like toys. Uh, I, if I find a bag of ornaments for like $4.99 to $9.99, uh, and there's 20 or more ornaments in there, I might pick them up if they look really good. Um, but if not, I just, I pass. I it is a hassle to go through, sort them, try to pair lots, um, or sell individuals for like five to ten bucks each. Um, but they have to be really unique. I think I sold an ornament that was like Santa riding a clove of garlic, right? It was just unique and interesting, and it sold like within a couple days. Um, but Western uh, ornaments do well for me. One time I found a, um, was it one of those ho Christmas houses, but it was for uh, Margaritaville, um, just sitting in the, the Christmas aisle and on the bottom, and it was perfect, it was mint condition, and I just don't know how I got so lucky. Um, that thing sold within two hours of me listing. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous, and I've never seen another one since. But I always go back to the Christmas aisle to look uh, for Margaritaville Christmas. This guy's on his phone, and I was just being patient, uh, waiting behind him. I eventually uh, say something just because he didn't see me. He's like, "Oh, oh, my bad," and I'm like, "Oh, no worries." Uh, we end up talking uh, about skateboarding a little bit. And then he's like, uh, there's a skateboard right here. And I was like, oh, I'm looking for like the older ones. And then he goes and finds another smaller uh, skateboard that I end up putting in the cart. Um, you can look up these bigger gloves uh, that sometimes they sell for good money. I got one in my store listed at 150 bucks right now that I found in this very store. Um, so... Some baseball gloves do sell for good money. Man, I'm sitting over here yawning. I apologize. It's been a day. This is the hustle of a reseller, though. You gotta just get it in when you can get it in, and um, there's just no um, there's no excuse for not having stuff to feed your store because your your eBay store kind of goes dormant if you go dormant. So you need to always have about ten listings, five ten listings a day to keep it pumping. Um, but you need them to be quality listings, so. Um, me getting out for a two hour run at night and then a good eight, 16 hours on the weekend is sometimes needed. So it's probably more like 10 hours on the weekends, but um, that level of effort's needed to, to really source enough to keep the store flowing. I miss the summer where they have the community garage sales where you have a hundred and within, you know, close proximity. That's the best um, is to find those. Swap meets kind of like that where it's got like a hundred places to go to see stuff in the same spot, so it saves you gas money. Um, 
it's just at the swap meet you have professional vendors and um, they're always asking a lot for their stuff you know more towards the eBay prices so you gotta know who's willing to come down and sell lower than eBay because they know you flip it for eBay um, and get a relationship with those vendors so I eventually do put this skateboard in my cart um, it sells between 35 and 100 bucks um, and they wanted 499 so when you want 499 for that that's where I was like well that's consideration but I'm not gonna put it in my eBay store I'm actually gonna sell it at the swap meet when I host my booth and I'll probably try to get 15 for it and settle for 10 just double my money um, if you're a viewer and you see me at the swap meet and you see the skateboard and you want to buy it for uh, the five I paid for it I'll totally honor that deal just because you are a watcher of my my channel uh, but just uh, know that I'm sometimes I'll pick stuff up if I think I can double it at the swap meet as well here's the stuffed animals there's so many stuffed animals but they mark them up really high here um, but there was a theme of um, Winnie the Pooh stuff in Disney here tonight I think it the dates were like 2000 kind of time frame still had the tags on them but they wrote right on it and it was super soft like really good uh, well made uh, plush right there I keep them on the cart to look them up but I, I think I end up putting them back then there's another poo and I'm like oh my god uh, somebody donated all their poo this one had a lot of poo on it uh, there was a lot of gunk on this one where I, I ended up putting them back I was grossed out and this is kind of a unique looking Dumbo here um I don't know how old it was it didn't have a date but it looked like it was quality um, but usually Disney only sells between 8 and 12 bucks for me so to spend 2 dollars on it, it's just not enough profit to make it worthwhile plush sells super slow for me here's a vintage Godzilla I'm like I have a customer at the swap meet who's into Godzilla, so I will try to source them. Um, but I also want to make sure that they're uh, working order. And this one had no battery, so I had no way to test it. But I looked it up uh, to see what it was worth. I want to say it was worth only like 15 bucks, but it was from 1987, so it was older. But when it says 1987 it's worth a look up because a lot of Godzilla sells really well for a high amount that one sold for like 15 bucks and it had the box I got a Godzilla that probably didn't work so I'm looking over the plush for rare um, like anime I gave up on that poo wouldn't even look them up just like I didn't want to deal with it over here in the tools uh, sometimes you find stuff like uh, even stuff for the trade if you're into videos and photography um, I find this photo light here and I really need some photo lights um, so I'm checking out to see if there's any flaws um, the next step if there's no flaws would be to go to the electrical section and plug it in but it did have a flaw is broken right here on the one of the stands so I end up putting it back boo but I find like a Schleg locks and different things in here um, you know like doorknobs uh, that sell pretty well for me so but just if you find a lock make sure it's brand new in the package 
A lot of people just like to repackage them, make them look like new, but they're old and been used. You don't want to sell something that's not uh, what's in the package. I'm looking at that little skateboard now to see if it's worth anything. Um, I used to source a lot of games. Um, I've stopped doing it. I've I've sold some games for 150 bucks, but it's like a a rare needle in the haystack. You get more headaches than you get uh, the games worth your time to keep looking every day. Um, so I I really look like I skim for something completely older, no barcode or um, different. Uh, a very uh, high-end game that you've never seen the name before. Those are the games I'll pick up and look up. But if it's average, I'm not looking. I have no clue what I'm looking up right here. Get the camera down, Sean. I can't see. What are you looking at? No clue. Could you guys tell what I was looking at? Oh, <laughs> that was like a Seminoles or um, some type of lamp, but it was like a uh, college football team lamp. Uh, it sold for nothing. I think they wanted eight bucks for it and it sold for fifteen, so just moving on. Here's the toy aisle. I'm always looking for big bulk bags of toys of the same brand. That does super well for me. Um, it's worth my time to piece them together, make lots, um, sell them individually if they're uh, a hotter toy. Here's a cabbage patch. I'm always looking for cabbage patch. Um, there's no date on the tag, but if you know anything about cabbage patch, usually on the back of the head mold or the back, they have some. They definitely want seven bucks. And I think some of the rare cabbage patch are the ones with like their babies with like a tooth. Um, this was a 2020 model, so I put it back. Not, not of the era I'm looking for. This is an interesting looking creepy doll. These toy sections are so full and so random. They need to clear this out and make it look better. There's just so much to look at, you can't look at anything. Well, if you made it this far, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, definitely looking forward to making more of these kind of videos for you. Leave me some feedback um, if you like this type of video and you want me to continue doing it. Or if you uh, want me to switch up the style a little bit. I'm going over here to start looking up the prices. Um, but I definitely want to say thanks again. I hope you subscribe and like the video. That helps me uh, keep grinding. Uh, Keep researching, and most importantly, have fun and be kind.